Let's find out something very interesting about a very common term most Buddhists have heard, or at least think they know a great deal about, the term Tathagata, or as they often call it, Tathagata. The term Tathagata, or pronounced Tathagata, in the common nonsensical definition by ignorant modern so-called Buddhism is meant thus come one, or thus gone one. This view ignorantly implies a formal appellation of importance, such as sir, master, great one, etc., rather than a denotation of a profound spiritual and metaphysical attainment. The term tathagata is composed of two parts, tat and agata. Tat has been, since time immemorial in India, meant Brahman, the Absolute, the Godhead. As in the famous Upanishadic dictum, Tattvamasi, that thou art, that here, of course, meaning Brahman, or the Godhead of the Absolute, the subject of selfhood, which the Muni or sage has reached as the pinnacle of his having fulfilled wisdom's perfection. Agata is the past tense denotation of gata, going, traveling, trekking, here being meant arrival, gone unto, attainment of, arrival at, meaning the Absolute. Or in the Sramanic concept of Vedanta and Buddhism, he thou who has arrived at that, i.e. the Absolute. The very term Tathagata, which has yet never been discovered by anyone until now, of course it's always been there, it's just been hidden and covered over by idiots and secular sectarian Theravadans and other various varieties of uh, so-called Buddhism is none other than a personal appellation of the very rare someone who is realized by wisdom, Tvatvamasi. The term Tathagata, therefore, is equally as well meant the Tattvam Asi Comprehensor or Sage. In other words, it is the, the spiritual persona, not the persona non grata or the corporeal self, but the spiritual person who has, by wisdom and samadhi, assimilated himself, meaning the self, capital T, capital S, upon the Absolute. It is unfathomable that modern Buddhism, so-called, in its position of the spiritual appellation of the Buddha's highest attainment, meaning arrived at Brahman, Tathagata, is merely and horrifically laughable an honorary designation for a popular sage. As in Iribhutaka 57 and other passages clearly show, Brahma Buddha, or become Brahman, is the meaning of the term Tathagata, or correctly said, Tathagata. Or he has arrived, Agata, again being meant a transfiguration and assimilation of the mind of the noose of the spirit, i.e. the citta, upon itself, and thereby achieving the absolute, i.e. Brahman, as such Brahma Bhuttam Tathagata, as said in doctrine. To say that the term Tathagata is meant by nonsensical Buddhism to the effect that Tathagata literally designates thus calm one or thus gone one as often and almost always translated has no contextual validity is utterly illogical stupefying silly absurd laughable to even read the Pali as such it carries no meaning whatsoever it is an utterly senseless English translation some things of course are untranslatable such as the Greek term noose and of course tathagata or tathagata is also highly untranslatable although its translation is very clear it certainly does not mean thus come one or thus gone one this is all of more important so magnified given that the very term Tathagata carries, regardless of translation, the most extreme importance in the metaphysics of scriptural Buddhism is denotation. Thereby secular Buddhism intends to castrate the meaning of the term Tathagata. Tathagata is yet another resection of original Buddhism by modern sects to turn Buddhism into a moralistic movement of secular humanism completely devoid of metaphysics. Because you have to remember, and you have to know this, and you better know it very well, because it is extremely important. If you deny the self, i.e. the soul, as the axis mundi, or the alpha and the omega of Buddhism, you have de facto castrated any form of metaphysics, Buddhism included, into mere humanism, morality, do good unto your neighbor, be a good person, live a good life, do good deeds, etc., 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 when you deny the self or the soul, i.e. the highest attainment gained through wisdom, as said in scripture, Pandavimutta, or to gain through somatic, epistrotic, apophatic, assimilative methodology, i.e. sati and samadhi, as meant citta vimutta, you have no religion. Of course, religion, of course, is just a secularized version of metaphysics, but you have no religion, you have no metaphysics, you have humanism. You cannot deny the self or the soul and affirm anything other than humanism as the highest absolute. 
So these translations are necessitated by these sects, these modern sects, and of course they go all the way back some 1800 years. When you deny the self of the soul, the highest obtainable is mere petty humanistic morality. The Tathagata, or Tathagata, means the body of the body of Brahman, means become Brahman, Diganakaya 3.84, Brahmabhutam Tathagata. Become Brahman is meant, is a definition of the term Tathagata, Iributaka 57. Passages like this go on and on and on. Brahmabhutta, or Brahman, equals Tathagata, and vice versa. The two terms are interchangeable. Thus come one, or thus come one, is irrelevant. It has no meaning whatsoever in any English translation. The best appellation that people can think of in their minds is to connote this as, well, this is just a uh, appellation meaning sir or master, a great one. This is the term or the appellation given to the Buddha. The Buddha is the Tathagata, and the Tathagata is the Buddha. It just means the great one, the master, etc. No, this is a metaphysical appellation of one who has attained at, past tense, agata, meaning he's arrived at, tat, as in the Upanishadic dictum, tatvam asi, that thou art. He has arrived at, via his wisdom and samadhi, he has arrived at the absolute. That is what the term tathagata means. It does not mean thus gone one or thus come one, as you will read in every English translation. There are thousands of things like this in the Pali, which... When you read modern Buddhism in its BS translations, i.e. it's secularized, it's neutered, it's castrated, it's bleached and brainwashed translations which preach only humanism and morality, it makes no sense. Anybody with half a brain would flush Buddhism in its current translation, in its current advertisement, straight down the toilet. No metaphysician, no person that is spiritually inclined, keyword, keyword here being spiritually, meaning the self or the soul, would have any interest in Buddhism. That is why Buddhism currently is a magnet, a refuse for Christian rejects, atheists, agnostics, etc., etc. Nobody that's interested in metaphysics or the spirit would be remotely interested in Buddhism unless they have underneath their belt 15 to 20 years and the brains and capacity to translate the ancient Pali, which basically nobody has, nor do they have the time for it. Anyway, I hope this clears things up for you on what the meaning, the actual meaning, the original intent, the original contextual passage of the Pali term Tathagata actually means, why it is important, and what it actually connotes, what it denotes, and what its contextual description and elaboration means as far as a metaphysical attainment, meaning attainment of the absolute. Once again, we're correcting the lies facts and only the facts. Let's look at doctrine, let's ignore conjecture, let's ignore hearsay and personal opinions, doxa. Let's look at what doctrine says, let's look at what logic says. This is all logical, it is all doctrinal, and it cannot be refuted. People have whined and moaned for decades upon me with emails and countless posts saying I'm wrong, I'm wrong because ex-commentator said this or they believe that or you know, it hasn't been taught this way for 1,500 years, and nobody teaches it. Who cares? Let's look at the doctrine, let's look at the scripture, and see what it says. I have the citations, I have the learning behind me. This is what scripture says, I have the citations behind me, I have the logic behind me. You cannot refute it. You can deny it, you can bitch, you can whine, you can moan. You can quote your guru, or your master, your teacher, or ex-commentary. But you will not. You cannot. You may not. You shall not refute it, because all religious debates ultimately must be grounded in a doctrinal citation. This was Martin Luther's bitch against the Catholic Church, much of which Catholicism teaches is not found in the Bible. This was the grounds for Martin Luther. Let's try to reestablish Buddhism as it was originally taught. Let's see if that's even possible. It probably isn't. Modern Buddhism, as I've equated it to other people, is like an ancient golden palace created by people of an advanced metaphysical learning long ago, but since been overgrown by weeds and grass, and the only people that live in that city now are monkeys that fling feces at each other. It is a nasty, horrible place, but underneath the giant feces pile heap is something golden, something wonderful, and the only people that are able to see it are people that have, like myself, have had the time 
decades and countless endless thousands of hours to be able to read and look into the original Pali. There have been only a handful of people over the past couple hundred years that have been able to do that, have been had the time to do that, have had the intellect to do that. And when you look at the original Buddhism and the original teachings, it is wonderful. It uncovers glorious things. I'm not saying Buddhism is any way original. I'm denying that. It is not original. But underneath all the filth and the muck that modern Buddhism passes itself off as, which of course, as Dr. A.K. Kumaro Swami said, Buddhism is most famous today for everything it originally never taught. Underneath all that muck and mire is something gorgeous and original, pure and undisturbed. Thankfully, the suttas the Digga Majima, Samyutta, Anguttara, and the Kudaka were recorded long before any sect, especially the Theravadins, who were originally known as the Sarvastivadins, ever existed. They were recorded in time immemorial, and they are brought down to us. And we were able to see what original Buddhism did or did not teach. And I can assure you that in the original Pali, original Buddhism, is something wonderful. Modern Buddhism is something filthy and nasty. It reeks of petty moralism and humanism, and is a soul-denying nihilism, at best, it is a morality-based agnosticism. And nobody who has any brains or any proclivity towards spirituality or illumination is interested in that kind of filth. And thankfully, original Buddhism is not that type of filth. Thank you. Further videos to follow on other discoveries in the original Pali as concerns original Buddhism as it exists, as it exists in its doctrine, not commentary.